One win, one draw and eight losses to start the season. That lone win coming way back in round one against the Brisbane Lions. And they need to get busy very, very quickly, the Saints. But the task doesn't get much tougher than this, taking on the West Coast Eagles on their home turf. Carlisle, a big out for the Saints. And speaking of the West Coast Eagles, what a start to the season they have had. A top of the ladder after nine consecutive wins. And they've won five of their six here at Optus Stadium. The only loss coming to Sydney back in round one. The coach of the West Coast Eagles, Adam Simpson, good enough to give us some of his time. Simo, welcome to you. Now, mate, I had to ask you first up, I know you're always confident heading into a season, but the fact that they've reached such a high level so quickly, has that surprised you? Oh, I must be honest, I probably didn't pencil 9-1 uh, yeah. this time of year, but uh, what's been really pleasing, we've pretty much played the same way, the same brand every yeah. week, and it's... It's holding us in pretty good stead, and we've, um, we're pretty consistent at the moment. Luke Shuey not, did, didn't quite get up. Dom Sheed's still in. Um, four weeks that he misses any major yeah. concern, or it was a difficult one. We we trained after the team was due, so we trained here at night on Thursday night. So we picked him thinking he was going to play, and he didn't have any incidents or anything like that. Just this morning, just you know, it didn't feel quite right. So as much as we wanted to play him, uh, we, we put him out late. Yep. So, mate, everyone's talking about uh, Andrew Gaff and his form, but Elliot Yo, uh, normally a swing man, forward back, but predominantly midfield. Tell us about how good his importance has been. Well, with the, with the loss of uh, Critter and, and Sam in the middle, we had to fill the void with... Sometimes you fill it with kids and you, you hope for the best, but we had Elliot, an All-Australian half-back, and we, we put him in the midfield. We thought Liam Duggan would play more in midfield as well, but uh, we're really pleased with, with Elliot and, and of course, uh, Jack Redden stepped up as well. So... Between the two of them, they're, they're holding up their end. Two contrasting styles tonight. You like to kick the ball out of control yeah. and they like to handle, get in an open play. Your pressure is going to have to be red hot. Yeah, we've, we've, you know, they're a bit smaller than us in terms of height. I think they've got only four players over 190 and we've got eight or nine. So that's either going to work really well for us or <laughs> really, really well for them. So we, we have to, we're on, on our guard with it. We understand what they want to do and stopping it's another story. Simo, you're in great form. We're looking forward to another great match. Good luck tonight and good luck for the rest of the right, season. Thanks, boys. Cheers. It is, of course, Indigenous Round, the Sir Doug Nichols Round, the Welcome to Country Ceremony and the First Bounce coming your way right after the break. Welcome back to Optus Stadium. A beautiful night in Perth and round 11 is the Sir Doug Nichols Indigenous Round, named after Sir Doug, who epitomised the spirit of reconciliation course, former Fitzroy footballer, governor of South Australia and first Aboriginal person to be knighted. We'll head downstairs to the Welcome to Country ceremony tonight, performed by Phil Narkle, the West Coast Aboriginal liaison officer, a former Sandover medalist, former Saint and inaugural West Coast Eagle and St Kilda legend in Nicky Winmar, of course, uh, 230 games, two best and fairest, two All-Australians, St Kilda team of the century member and a WA Football Hall of Famer. Kaya Kudas, Wanju Wanju, Nichinunga Butcha. Hello, friends. Welcome to our country. My name is Phil Magic Nark. My tribal name is Koryo. I would like to welcome you all here today on Nunga Country. I would like to pay respects to the elders, both past and present, of the Nunga Nation and extend that respect to other Aboriginal Australians and non Aboriginal Australians that are present. This welcome brings good spirits to provide safe passage for all those who enter and walk the pathway. Please remember, don't keep Aboriginal history a mystery. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, now we'd like to invite the Indigenous representatives from both teams to exchange gifts to mark this occasion. Terrific ceremony and great to be celebrating Indigenous Round. Excellent to have Nikki Winmar here at Optus Stadium as well. The St Kilda legend, born in WA, and it's been 25 years since he took a stand for his culture at Victoria Park in what became an iconic image. There's certainly been many fantastic Indigenous players in the AFL, and we celebrate them in this round, the Sir Doug Nichols Round. Uh, really, Rioli is one of those Indigenous players, and what a mark he's been making, Matthew Pavlich, for the West Coast Eagles in a short space of time this season. Yeah, he's had a terrific year. You're right, perhaps. He yeah, really come on this year. I think they've always rated his talent, but last week you can see there on screen had a big impact on that game against Hawthorne, and is really a strong reason why this West Coast team has had such a great start to the season. Really looking forward to seeing what St Kilda can offer up tonight, Pav. Yep. I mean, everyone's come here and everyone that's tuned in probably expects top of the table West Coast to give a St Kilda team that's sitting down near the bottom of the table a, a bit of a hiding tonight. They've got no Carlisle, no Brown as key defenders, so they get Logan, they get, uh, sorry, Logan Austin comes yep. in and um, Marshall is going to have to play key defensive post as well. They're going to need a, an 18-man focus yeah. uh, in terms of a team defence out there, otherwise they're going to get cut up. But it's that sort of challenge that sometimes brings a good response from teams with their backs to the wall. Particularly away from home, for whatever reason, there's, there's a sense of less pressure. You get away together, you spend a little bit of time celebrating or preparing for the game, and uh, maybe that can bring out the best of them. Well, the exchange in the middle, Jake Gresham in there for the Saints. He actually had a hand in designing the Indigenous jumper for St Kilda, along with his mum, Michelle, and the graphic design at the St Kilda Footy Club and uh, it is fantastic to see uh, the Indigenous players from both sides out there in the middle for the toss of the coin as so we wait to see who will win that to kick us off tonight and it will be West Coast. Lewis Jetta, a bit of confusion maybe as to which way they're going to go between Brendan Archie and Lewis Jetta, but we're not too far away. Your final thoughts, Matthew Pavlich, Jason Dunstall before the bounce. Well, look, I think everyone probably thinks coming here tonight it should be a pretty easy game for West Coast to take care of, but looking forward to seeing what St Kilda can do. Very much in the same boat, expecting West Coast to show us why they're sitting on top of the table. And, and, and these are the games when they can continue to build percentage, put themselves in a really good position as they try to lock down a, a top four and then a top two position as the second half of the season unfolds. If you can get to the bye in this sort of shape, well, it just sets your season up so well. And St Kilda, virtually every week's the, you know, the last roll of the dice for them. They've got to start showing something. Well, it's the Saints' second trip to Optus Stadium. They're here just three weeks ago to take on Fremantle, where they went down by 30 points. And it really has been a, a different tale this season for both of these sides. West Coast's only loss of the season came in round one. St Kilda's only win of the season coming in round one when they beat the Brisbane Lions. And West Coast winning streak, nine in a row at the moment, the third longest in their club's history. They're looking to make it 10 tonight. The Eagles starting with all their tall timber down there. You've got Lysette, Kennedy down forward along with Darling, of course. Jeremy McGovern, important player to West Coast defence. He's got memory at the moment down the St Kilda forward line end. Just repeating Luke Shuey that late out tonight for West Coast as well. And we're set to go round 11. The Eagles and the Saints from Optus Stadium. And it's Hickey, who's favoured by the bounce to get things underway. Steal there, Gresham flash past. But Cripps will get the first meaningful possession away. Billings copped a bad bounce. Shepherd's handball was knocked down. Well followed up by Billings. Got it to Stephen. Quick entry inside 50. But it'll be chopped off by Jeremy McGovern, who does that so well. And that's the one thing St Kilda don't want to see. Intercept marks, particularly Jeremy McGovern, just picking them off at will. Jackson Nelson back into the side for tonight's match. 
has well, been in and out of the 22. Tom Barris. And this is their big switch. This is their style. They like to control the ball. Once they get forward to centre, they go quickly to a, an even numbered forward line, but they don't want to give the ball back. They want to chip it around, possess it. Oh, it's a dangerous kick. It was well knocked down in the end by Steele. Away from Jetta Geary. Guys in short. Here's Weller. He's back in the Saints lineup for this match. The kick over the head of Billings Yo, dropping the mark. Feed the handball out inside 50. Oh. That's an awkward collision from McGovern. No whistle on the play, though. Grisham could have been given a free kick. We'll get another look at it. Yeah, a bit of a clumsy approach, wasn't it, from McGovern and the right arm initially a little high. A bit have, stiff, Jade Grisham. Could have well been in the back. Yep. Six goals last week for Jade Grisham. Goal kicker win. The Saints have desperately been searching for one. It's a good releasing kick here from Gaff to allow Jetta just to cruise into a bit of space. Off half back, he sends it up towards Kennedy, who marks strongly. Gee, that's a great kick. Austin had made fantastic position, great kick. Nelson just pokes it up towards Lyson, and the big Ruckman's got it. So we spoke about uh, the jobs that these players are going to have to do. Uh, Marshall on Lyson. Logan Austin on Kennedy, and that, and that leaves Jimmy Webster having to do the job on Jack Darling, who's in career best form. So, certainly a little bit undermanned down back the Saints, and they're going to rely heavily on players further afield to make sure there's plenty of pressure on the way the ball's coming down. As you mentioned, that suspension of Jack Carlisle really not helping the Saints' cause tonight. And Scott Lysett has been in career best form this season, working in partnership with Nick Natanui. He hooks that kick. Land in the pocket. Darling's down there. He's been marking everything this season. Not that time. And Jimmy Webster, probably a little disappointed he didn't have teammates coming over the top there. Nearly got exposed one-on-one -on -one with a long kick going in that really should have been uh, a pack kill by the Tools for St Kilda, particularly Hickey, the Ruckman. Natanui looking it down. Lacra was there. Geary right with him. Still a clearing kick. The bounce favoured Shepard. He can set it back inside 50 for the Eagles towards Darling. But Natanui had front position wrestling with Tom Hickey. And the two Ruckman having the first two shots of the game for the Eagles. Well, it was a good kick coming in. It sort of was to the advantage of Natanui. And he just used his bulk and size to really get Hickey out the road. This is a challenging kick from the pocket, but well within his reach. Nick Natanui, three goals so far this season. Oh, this will be a bright start for West Coast. And from the tight angle, Nick Nat gets the job done. Not sure it was the cleanest kick off the boot. <laughs> Little bit of a, a, a mongrel floater that just turned over beautifully and went right to left. But he's going to be an imposing presence every time he gets in the forward 50, as he's like. So they've got so many great targets to kick at. It was a really good kick from Shepard. He just yep. pulled the kick late in the direction of uh, Nat Nui and big Tom Hickey needs to be more physical than that got to be a lot more physical on this bloke I think you'll find you mentioned it earlier on Jason they're down on some tools in their defence so I think Nat Nui spent a bit more time for they'll try and stretch the Saints and drag Hickey oh. away 100th goal of the career Down. for Nick Nat Nui I see a free Yo. kick Holding Elliot Yo. coming back in the middle of the ground to yeah. Elliot Yo. So Ross a little confused as to what it was for. As West Coast go inside 50 again, Kennedy there. Natanui back into his space trying to take the mark. Here's Rice, wobbling one out of defence and it's shopped off again. Here's Reddit. He's going to send it long again, looking for the tall timber. Kennedy over the top, came from about three deep. It landed with Natanui. Lice at strong hands, got it out to Sheed. The late inclusion tonight off the left. He's wobbling it, wafting it. It's through for a goal. Well, when you turn the ball over coming out of your defence and you're able to get it back in, that's really what the game's about. Repeat entries, and West Coast did it so well on that occasion. The kick coming out from Bailey Rice was intercepted by Red, and he just pumped it back in. The big contest there from Kennedy, and that knew he's had a lot to do with the early part of this game. And then, quite simply, it was a, a, an easy snap for Sheed in the end. Had a lot of time to sum it up, snap, and... It's a great start for West Coast. Dom Shee could probably consider himself a little bit unlucky to have been dropped this yep. week. Has been in good form this season. He kicks a goal there. OK, 
came back in. The expensive Luke Shuey didn't quite get up for the match. Now the Saints will get a clearance out of the middle. Ross up to the 50, but again intercepted. This time it's her. It's a poor kick under no pressure from Seb Ross. He's got to do better with that. They've got to make the most of their opportunities there. They're poor at the best of times converting when inside 50. They can't afford to waste those entries. This is the part of the West Coast game which has been impressive this year. They use the whole ground, the width, spread the defence, and then they just find their way down territory in inside 50s, which has been an all-time high. Yeah, and they do most of it by foot to go, don't they? They've just proven themselves to be very effective at kicking. Oh. It's going to be a 50 here as well. Was that a seven-metre pass? Yeah, it didn't look 15, but... I, mean, I reckon he's a bit stiff. Yeah, Maloney didn't think it was the required distance, but he's given away the 50. The old adage of playing to the whistle. Yep. Door goes long into the pocket again. Kennedy, the target. Darling waiting for it. And Archie in support. Geary. Boundary line was looming, but Savage just gained some territory. Up to half back. Just clocks to the line. It just stays in. We get a boundary throw in. Well, it's in some ways disturbing signs for St Kilda so far. They've been under pressure every time they've come out of their, their back half, and their entries have just been cut off by the likes of Hearn and McGovern. They just really need to get some composure in their decision-making, in their ball use, and get some forward thrust going their way. Another thing they need to do is find the footy. It's 26 possessions to 11 at the moment. They're just not getting their hands on it. And one of their prime movers in Jack Stephen, who's off having a spell at the moment, he's being heavily uh, shadowed by uh, Mark Hutchings, so it's going to yep. be a tough night for him. Just the one possession early. West Coast. Free kick will go the Eagles' way. We heard Adam Simpson talking pre-game about all the talls that they've yes. got. And, and the first thing you notice is every time they go forward, the size of the Eagles players is creating problems for the St Kilda defence. They're holding ball. it in. In again, Kennedy was up. Slapped on by Archie. You know, fumbled, but recovered. Got it away to Cripps, who just poked it in the direction of Kennedy, who used the body and the strength to push off and take the mark. Josh Kennedy started the game on fire. He hasn't really touched it that much, but he's... He's really jumping and leaping at the ball, which I wouldn't say is his normal strength. He's so good on the lead and so agile with his leads, but really looks sharp and on tonight. 15 seconds. Three goals straight last week for Josh Kennedy. Gotta hang on to that mark after pushing away from Gresham. West Coast have started well, and Josh Kennedy adds another one. Off to a fly, which just makes life even tougher for the St Kilda Footy Club. And oh, there's going to be problems for them if the ball continues to come in with such regularity. And the talls are just getting their hands to it first. They're mopping up at ground level as well. And poor old Jade Gresham found himself one out against Josh Kennedy and did his best to try and find a way to halve that contest, but he was never going to be able to. Just really smart play by Kennedy. Once the contest was won, they could, he could see the ball was could end up with West Coast. He got into a dangerous position, reposition, and gets the shot at goal. So some real cause for concern for St Kilda. West Coast dominating the early stages of this one. She gathers. Good tackling pressure that time from Savage. Stephen ran into trouble but got out of it. Weller will bust his way through the middle. Kicks wide to half forward, looking for Loney. Hopes the ball will sit up for him. He'll turn. And you'll look inside 50. Up now towards McCartan. Barris closing late. McCartan went again. Weller continued to run. Won it. Stephen tried to hack it out of the air. Still going the Saints. Fed it back. Clark couldn't find a way through. It's just a wall of West Coast jumpers as he tried to slip it through. And that one fisted away. I reckon stay Matt, inside 50 for the Saints. I reckon Matt Weller's cost Paddy McCartan the mark there mm. and a shot for goal because he would have been paid the mark taking it at the second attempt because he was the man in front yep. of that pack as it was attempted to spoil and uh, Weller just trying to crumb it, ripped it out of his hands. Hickey down to Clark. Slipped over. Sinclair. Look at the handball across to Billings who runs out of room. As simple as this may sound, this is just an opportunity for St Kilda to build a bit of pressure, keep it in their forward half for some time, repeat entries, get a bit of space, maybe snag a goal. This is good but better signs from the Saints. Lice it and Hickey locking up. Archie able to gather off hands. Sends a high ball. Just away by Rice. Archie recovering. Rioli couldn't take it down low. Rice went again. Weller had it stripped away. 
The Saints have got some numbers, though, off the pack. Austin up to the 50. It's just out in front of Membry. He's got time to gather it. Feed it backwards. Wright will just chip it over the top. Loney competing hard, but the boundary line again. West Coast defence standing up. Alan Richardson down here coaching from the boundary line. It's a good move. You come over to Perth, very hard to win. You want the communication of your players being very quick. Haven't had the start they wanted, but uh, interesting that it's been in their half for the last couple of minutes. Coaching his 100th match tonight. Alan Richardson. Stephen Ross. Back to Gresham. Looking to create something. He put it out into space. McCartan there against Barris. Barris, good body work. He's worked the forward away from it. And now West Coast up to half back to Rioli. He's certainly become a fan favourite quickly. That one just over the head of Lacra. McKenzie. We'll go forward again. I'll send it long. It's out the back. Hutchings in there. Stephen. Strong tackle. West Coast pressure again. Good. Hearn. Away to Redden. Can build off half back again. Kick though for Kenzie. He's overshot the handball to Webster. And West Coast might be out the back here. They've got numbers four to the football. Sheed for Redden. He's got a number of options inside 50. And he split oh. the difference between three of them. And only found right. Well, they had three forwards on two defenders. That was the one place. He just didn't need to kick the footy. Now, a quick movement by the Saints back up the ground. Sinclair finds Billings. And McCartan on the long lead, getting up the ground. And that'll be 50. 50. Ooh, so, right. big call here. And a great opportunity for Paddy McCartan to take his time. We saw him miss an easy one early in last week's game. He needs to kick this as a settler for the Saints. Get themselves on the board after that early onslaught. Here it is, the 50. Willie Rioli, Rioli just running straight past. and He just had the head down. His opponent was on the other side of the uh, yep. the mark, and he had to follow him on the same side. Paddy McCartney. Six goals, nine for the season. Saints generally across the board have had trouble converting the last couple of years. The Saints desperately need one, and McCartney steers it through nicely. Secure to get there first. What well done to the Saints and McCartan. There was a much needed goal, of course. West Coast starting so well. It wasn't the prettiest drop and, and kick of the ball, yeah. but it was effective enough. And he was probably uh, uh, unlucky in many ways that Weller early didn't have the opportunity to see Adam Simpson's <laughs> reaction there in the box. <laughs> well, coaches 50, don't like seeing goals no. gifted, do they? That yeah. was a yeah, very average kick off the boot, but it got there. But the best build-up to that play was they had it in their half for three or four minutes and then quick transition, West Coast didn't make their opportunities and then they used the open side. You've got to do that. When West Coast used the width of the ground, there's always the open side. Touch Anyway, against Marshall Touch in the middle. Touch Hutchings got it forward. It was touched off the boot. Haven't quite realised yet, Rice. I would have just get the kick away. I'm not sure that was Another 15. eight metre. Yeah, yeah. One, perhaps. There's but a few of them. It was in the traffic, so it was paid. And then a free kick infringing. Is Natanui on McKenzie? Yeah, he started well, McKenzie. Fifth disposal. Webster speared it up the line. Not sure Weller was the intended target. But Nunes gets it in the end, sends it in towards Billings. But tough there trying to mark against the tall well, defence of West Coast. The idea, yeah, the idea was right, I think. Billings was going over the top, but Barras just read it so well. As you think he could have penetrated a bit more, perhaps. Brad Shepard towards Darling. Had to spoil from behind. He's able to knock it down. Good tackle by Membry. And Lacra. He's got Clark high. Oh, we'll get a stoppage and a ball up. Yeah, the one thing they've got to force when they do go forward, St Kilda, is at least a 50-50 contest from the forwards. And I know he was trying to get it over the top of Brass, but he didn't yeah. get it over yeah. the top, and it was an intercept mark that they didn't even contest. Real scrap for the football. Marshall just able to get his boot to it. Gain a few extra metres. Taken by Cole. Across to Hearn. Yeah, you'll skip it. Pumps it back up the oh, 50. And Kennedy back. really Good. nudged. Push out. Jeez. Austin underneath it. Not spotted. Picked up by Archie. Now he's got runners heading back towards goal. Cripps has got a couple to beat. Ross gets back to help out. And he controls it well. Does the Saints start. And he'll send it in short to Loney. Got away with one of the best shoves you've <laughs> seen, Josh Kennedy. 
Yes, Phillips. Oh, Shannon Hearn's positioned himself. They do need a switch. Shannon Hearn positioned himself right down the field. So good play by the Saints. Switching the ball. Phillips on that occasion. He's got a loose here now. We've Worked done that well. Yeah. It's like get out to Austin at half back. And then he's kick and he's lets him down. See what he's trying to do. To he needed that 55 metre kick and he just couldn't get the penetration on it. West Coast back the other way. Tachi. Look up, try and find a target. Kennedy wrestling again. He had the size there on Savage. Did pretty well to bring the ball to ground. Now Ross will go in short to Marshall. I think Shane Savage did an excellent job holding yep. his uh, his position there. And he had the advantage position-wise, but he had to show good strength to hold him off. Geary unsure where to go. They missed the target with a handball. Webster under pressure. Waterman after him. Well done by Stephen. Geary, Webster, Stephen busting through the tackle of Duggan. He's creatively chipping it up the boundary line. Billings tackle lingering there. Maloney will set a high ball up towards Membry. Took a good mark on the wing. With Natanui going back the other way, there's Billings. Long to a two on two. Hearn in front. Whistle and a free kick to the Eagles. The kick from uh, coming in, Jay Gresham had made a lead sort of towards the corridor. It needed to come to the leg of his teammate on that occasion. Shannon Hearn just mopped it up. Good defense, well. good defense here from St Kilda. Yeah. They haven't had a fast play yet, West Coast. So they're locating really quickly, trying to stop that transition, which has been a force this year. What they have done too is they've evened up possession. Yep. So they're starting to get their hands on the footy more. West Coast burst out of the blocks. Oh, that'll be paid. Oh, no, that's man in front. Know. Man in front. We thought Marshall yeah. had more of it. I thought Marshall was had front position and had the ball at the beginning of the mark anyway. To Natanui. <laughs> because he marked it. And now a 50 oh. as well. Well, see, Seb Ross is having a go at him saying he's paid the mark the wrong way. And uh, too much abuse has cost him 50 and a shot for goal, and, and you just can't do that. No, it's disappointing, isn't it? Fair enough to ask the question once of the umpire just to make sure that it's the right way, but here's the mark. Bottom right hand screen. And. The jump ball, Marshall. perhaps. Yeah. That's a mark to Rowan Marshall. I agree, Digger. I thought man in front. And the 50 can really prove costly. There's Nick Nananui, who's already got one goal on the board, taken well within range. He puts it through and makes them pay. So that's something that Alan Richardson will find incredibly frustrating. They've worked their way back into the game after conceding the first three goals. They got one of their own. They're starting to win possession, evening up the inside 50s. Everything's starting to even up numbers-wise, but then you go and give an, an undisciplined goal away. Tough decision against them, but uh, too much chit-chat to the umpires. Cost them a 50-metre penalty and a goal. There it is, Seb Ross. Just a little bit too much on that occasion. Just an injury concern down here for St Kilda Bailey. Rice is getting some attention to a right hip, limped off the ground. As the doctors and physios assess him, I'll keep you updated. Thanks, Dicko. Eagles by 18 points. Jetta after it. Hickey able to send it forward out towards Membry. Took it pretty well after the bounce yeah, well and did very well to get the handball to Sinclair, who will send it long up towards the square. McCartan got a couple to be Good spoil by Nelson. Able to slap it through for a rush behind. You can see Rice there getting the treatment on the sidelines. Looks like a corky of some point, a hit pointer. Yeah. They're always nasty, particularly on a bit of a chilly night here in Perth. But that third man in, that J J Nelson on that occasion, I think it was, came across and affected the spoil. That, that play from West Coast has been a feature all year. Brad Shepard's also very good at it. McGovern up the wing, and Austin just helps himself to the spoil and knocks it over the line as Nanui heads for a breather. These two sides played twice last season. The Eagles by 19 points in Perth. Saints led most of that afternoon, ran over late. And then the Saints by 10 points at Etihad Stadium in round 20. So Kilda did play well against the Eagles a couple of times last season as we see the free kick going the way of Jack Stephen. Well, even numbers in front of the ball for St Kilda, six forwards at that stoppage. So, opportunity to go in quick. Swing it through the middle, White. Chip it forward again, and Gresham 
Bob's up so good against the Tigers last week. He tried to squeeze well the kick in. McCartan just crashed that pack. Certainly will have the Eagles defenders thinking twice next time. And now Kennedy's got it up through the middle of the ground. Archie looking to generate the run. Darling just put it on the boot. He's trying oh. to get it through. And it did. It slipped its way through to Jamie Cripps, who paddles soccers and gets it there in the end. It was a great goal in the end to Jamie Cripps, who works incredibly hard to get forward of the ball, but that's a great contest from four players, really. All four of them, Hearn, I thought Nelson. Nelson. Nelson did a great job because he saw the lead yeah, coming and he yeah, left his well. man and got across to help the spoil. But this was the result, Archie and Darling linked up, and then the tumble punt. Austin <laughs> played it well. He just couldn't quite find and track the ball to stop it going forward. In the end, Cripps did a great job to paddle it to the goal square and finish it. Jamie Cripps obviously started his career at the Saints. This won't help. Paddy McCartan just down here, boys. He jogged off the ground and then collapsed uh, just over the boundary line on all fours again. So, Well, he was involved in that one, Digo, where he had three players spoiling, so keep an eye on that and let's hope there's no concussion or anything like that involved as we see Hickey come off with the blood rule. It was a terrific contest from all players. McCartan came charging out and crashed that pack and talked about Nelson reading the ball. Fantastic by all players. They're just checking his right ribs at the moment, so probably winded, but uh, big collision as you mentioned. So back in the middle after Hickey goes off with the blood rule. Marshall there against Lysett. Almost took possession of it. Gaff lost it. Now Stephen. His handball. Yo, attacking it though. Split between a couple of Saints. Now full of running. He pulls the kick back with great vision towards Cripps. He couldn't mark either. Played by White. Phillips. Steele. Just got the kick away. So he's about to be tackled by Nelson. Cole trying to spoil. Weller over the top of it. The free kick will go the Saints way. Yeah, good reward there to Matt Weller because he kept his feet. And that's what the rules ask you to do these days. McGovern was down the line again. So St Kilda doing this well. Controlling the ball. Moving it around. Trying to get it away from the West Coast defence. Webster. Wide about to be run down. Chased by Cripps. McGovern. Able to knock it down. Loney left it behind. Slick handball. Dug it. Got Cole on the move. Gaff. McGovern. Now wide for Hutchings. Good long lead from Waterman. Not Just... initially. Then spotted. <laughs> Had to reward the effort. Yeah, they're, Babich, they're, they're, the ones, they're the ones you want to get rewarded when you've led. You know, 50, 60 metres, really hard up the ground. Once again, they just filled really well. The Saints got the numbers back in support. Darling couldn't mark between two, and he's gone down awkwardly. Jack Darling as well. He's clutching at that ankle straight mm. away. Could be a real concern for West Coast with their in-form forward. As this ball's locked in under the pack, and Darling is still down. Holding that lower yeah. left leg, isn't he? There it is again in replays. A really good jump and leap of the ball. It's the right one as he lands. Oh. That doesn't look... No, something gives way. Everyone in the stands just oh. holding their breath. It was almost like he landed on Austin's foot as well, so... AFLPA yeah, Player of the Month, Jack Darling. Yeah, in a lot is, of pain right now. That is a big story. It's worse than a sprained ankle. That, that could well be, uh, and I hope not, but that wouldn't surprise me if there's a broken leg involved. Calling for the stretcher, perhaps for Jack Darling. Play will continue just for the moment as it goes wide now for Sinclair. St Kilda got a numbers advantage just at the moment. Ross squeezed it in short but chopped off by Hutchings. Well, those pitches we're seeing bottom left of screen are actually encouraging now because he's holding the leg himself and moving it himself. That's really, really encouraging because the way it gave way on the way down... I was really concerned that he'd done something serious, but he, he, he may take no further part in the game, but it looks better than it could have. So, no stretch. He's going to be taken from the ground, Jack Darling, by the trainers. I guess the major concern now that it's looking like it, it may not be a break, you, you'll see it again here. He, he lands on that right foot and maybe a oh. little bit of Austin's foot, and therefore it's that syndesmosis. Uh, reaction that can happen between the two bones when they split the lower part of the leg. So that's no doubt what they'll be looking at. He's playing in such good form. He's having a career best year, Jack Darling. As he gets the applause as he's taken from the ground. 
What can the Saints manufacture while this is all going on? Billing sends it inside 50. Membry just got there in time. Really well read off the boot. Tim Memory, as we see Darling hobbling across the line. It doesn't look great, but that's so much better than much what it could better. have been, yeah. Pat. So much better. So let's hope we get a good report on Jack Darling. But Tim Membry has gone from the best set shot in the competition to one of the worst very, very quickly. Well, last time he was here at Optus Stadium against Fremantle just three weeks ago, one goal five yep. that night. It just gets into your head as a goal kicker and he's got to find a way to get back to the way he was a couple of seasons ago. Tim Membry. Hoping for the goal. Looks no. good. That'll give him a lot of confidence. That'll give the Saints plenty of confidence. Oh, well, you can see what it means to him. That reaction there, no doubt, the 1 5 from a few weeks ago here at Optus would have been on his mind. Quite obviously, it's been talked about plenty in the media. Firstly, let's look at the way he reads this ball off the boot. It wasn't the prettiest kick coming in again to the forward line, but you can see he's tracking back there. He's He's pointed that way and just reads it really quickly. Very good reaction from memory and then a fantastic finish to give him some confidence. There's that reaction. No wonder he liked it after so much talk about his goal kicking. He started the game well. He did kick two goals straight last week, Tim Memory, but had a couple that went right off the side of the boot. There's Clark, tackled strongly by Natanui. Certainly been a talking point this season. A legal one there. Sheed. Gaff. Now to Redden. The Saints have been challenging West Coast. The Eagles go forward here. Kennedy. He attracted three of them. And waiting down to accept was Jamie Cripps. But that goes well off the side of the boot. Now to bounds on the foot. Just an update quickly on Jack Darling. He's walking on the boundary. A uh, little bit of discomfort as no, But he was indicating that it went right. So the three ligaments on the outside of your ankle. So the doctors was just taking him down to the rooms and assess him now. Thanks, Sticko. That's such a good result. I mean, we've already seen a couple of broken legs this year, and you just worry every time a player crashes to the ground like that and you see a leg give way that it's going to be something serious. Especially with the amount of pain he looked to be mm. in initially. And here goes St Kilda. Good movement this time. And Sinclair goes in short. McGovern appealed back. Nunes was able to lead up to take the mark. Paddy McCartan had space, yep. and they didn't use him. Here's a long kick, Jack Nunes. That build-up from St Kilda is fantastic. That's the real run and draw that they've tried to implement in the game all year. Very smart use of the hands, drawing West Coast players, gives them a shot at goal. So, after the Eagles burst out of the blocks, the Saints have certainly responded. He just chips that one in up to the top of the square, and Natanui easily enough to read that and knock it over the line. That kick pays off so rarely these days because they're never on the same wavelength as their teammates. And unless the teammate's leading just as you're about to kick the ball and he's one step ahead of everyone else, Won't it's work. a pointless kick, particularly when Natanui had got back there to fill in the hole. Well, that was almost a throw <laughs> from Natanui, who spiked it away. Clark sends it long, and Barris will get back. Normally that kick from outside, Jason, goes to the shortest defender and the biggest forward leads, puts the big knee in the back. Yep. That's normally the set play. And that to Cripps. So seven intercept marks to one. Dominating that area. It's always the risk coming in tonight, wasn't it, West Coast? So good at reading the ball coming in. Hearn, McGovern, Shepard, been outstanding all year. And what it allows is them to set up this type of stuff, to control the ball, chip it around, get their game going. Inside the last minute of this first term, Gaff cruising up the wing. And that kick will fall in short. Well chopped off by Austin. Former power player. Gee, that's a strange Gee. handball to give. Certainly put Phillips under some pressure. Strange kick. And that one just paid the 15. So they're living dangerously as the seconds tick down in this first term. It was an eight metre backwards kick. I was three of them so far this quarter. <laughs> Fury long. Oh. Barris! Over the top, almost with the one hand. Gee, it was a good <laughs> sit, wasn't it? He was up there for a long time. Now to do we handball oh. on the up, cruising past his Jetta, and he can launch them. But that one into the forward pocket. He had a couple of options on. Waterman's got his hands in the air. Josh Kennedy was seething. Here's his leap. And we see Tom oh, Barris. Oh, that's a nice. Going for a fly. He just couldn't hang on as he came back down to ground level. But the first quarter belonged to West Coast here at Optus Stadium. They lead it by 17 points at quarter time.
Welcome back to Optus Stadium. The first quarter belonged to the West Coast Eagles. They led it by 17 points at the first change. Nick Natanui with a couple of goals, the second of which thanks to a 50-metre penalty. But the Saints did fight back in that first quarter and have started to even things up on the stats page. But Jason Dunstall, Matthew Pavlich, the biggest story from that first quarter was an injury to uh, the inform forward of the Eagles, Jack Darling. Well, we feared all sorts of things when he went down the way. He was clutching the leg, the way it gave way underneath him. The pain that he was showing, you can just see it. Oh, that, that. And we've seen a couple of players break their leg exactly the same way, landing like that. And all of a sudden he was up, he was limping on it, and then by the time he got to the boundary, he was walking unassisted. And that is a great outcome, regardless of uh, w whether he's going to take a much further part in tonight's game. That's so much better than what it could have been. Spot on, Jace. It looked horrible to begin with, but good news for West Coast that. They, it looks as though he'll be okay. I really enjoyed the fact St Kilda got back in the game. All the numbers really are yeah, even. Yeah. Um, they've just scored off St Kilda's turnovers, West Coast. So um, there you go. Stop there fast. That's good insight into what they're trying to do. Um, and they did that really well, I thought. They really stopped their movement. West Coast were able to kick it around a bit, yeah. but they didn't get allow them to penetrate. St Kilda started to own the footy. It was 25 to 11 possessions early in West Coast's favour. After that time... They had another 66 West yep. Coasters and killed having 100. So they really started to collect the footy, control it. It's just about what they do with it, particularly going forward. If they yeah. can find that little bit of polish, they'll be able to put some scoreboard pressure back on West Coast. Seb Ross with the nine disposals. Jack Stephen, nine for the Saints. Mark Hutchings with seven for the Eagles. Alan Richardson's been coaching from down on the boundary line tonight, coaching in his 100th game as well as he uh, chats now with Ben Dixon. Thanks very much, Pabs. How did you assess the first quarter, Richo? Oh, their big blokes got hold of us early, Dicko. They, you know, we lost three contests in a row and they scored. Other than that, if you can take away that, which is hard to do given they scored every time, I think our rebounds have been pretty positive when we look to go and, and play with a bit of composure. At times, a little bit too quick, but no, I think we got back in the game late in the quarter. Appreciate your time. Thanks, mate. I think that's a fair assessment too. They got yep. themselves back in it. They need to start in the same vein here. And he wasn't in that much of a hurry to get off the ground because he's coaching from the boundary line. <laughs> well, Makes a difference, doesn't it? have been some issues with the coaches getting back up the yeah. lifts here at Optus Stadium. So <laughs> maybe a good decision from the St Kilda coach. But second quarter about to get underway from Optus Stadium. Brilliant night in the West. And a crooked bounce to start, but Natanui will hit it down. Ross sends a high ball out towards half forward. Bouncing one for Membry. You couldn't take it on the half volley initially. Rockets it back through to Geary. The Saints building towards the 50. Jetta trying to chop it off. Yo, handball over the head. Super creative to get it to Sheed. And now Duggan controls it up the wing to Waterman, who takes it on the stretch. Presents really well at the footy. Jake Waterman, strong lead. Really explosive off the mark. Been an important find for them this year. He's played every game this season, Jake Waterman. The son of former Eagle Chris. Played in a couple of premierships for West Coast in the 90s. Jetta, it's a dangerous kick. Showed a little bit too much of it to Webster, who knocked it away from the crowd, but they're able to recover. Thanks, Jack. Here's Hearn. Well, we've talked about it a bit, but St Kilda have been really strong in their defensive actions, moved, not allowing West Coast to move the ball quickly from their back half, which has been a strength all year. One kick from Hearn. Kennedy, the spoil. Almost could have taken the mark. At the second bite, Gaff got it back to Redden. Now Nelson, just sent a high one, up to the 50. Marshall after it, but standing tall, Austin. Nice grab. That's a good change of direction. Rice out there, gets it to Ross. Terrific work rate from Tim Emery. He, yep. he started essentially on the opposite side of the square, and he's walked all the way across here to the wing or the halfback position. Fantastic running. Back for Rice. He was getting a bit of treatment in that first quarter. The great thing about that too, Pav, is when you get rewarded with the ball, you're yep. likely to continue doing yep. it. Whereas when you're getting torched all the time, you think, why am I busting my butt here and I'm not getting the leather? And you drop off a little bit with your work rate. Webster goes wide. It was just over the fingertips of Kennedy. And Hickey was able to take it. Now White around the wing. He ran his full measure. Sends it up to the 50. Sinclair got a good hand in there. McCartan after it. You can see Jack Darling just riding the bike down in the rooms as the ball goes up to the goal square. Over the head of the forwards and out of play. And there he is again, Tim Emery in screen. Jack Darling, we saw just 
working the legs over as he gets himself right with that ankle. But been really impressed by Tim Memory's work rate. Up and down the ground, it's his real strength. Give you a lot of Eagles fans breathing a big sigh of relief seeing Jack Tarling on the exercise bike. Sheed out of defence. Rice the spoil down. Ross to Webster. Being forced backwards initially, the Saints, but now Rice sends it to half forward. Shepard, the fist down into his teammate Gaff, and then Gaff and then Geary missed with a handball. I think the other thing about this game, too, everyone needs luck in this game. Jack Darling's in career best form. Mm. The last thing you need is a serious injury. We want to see him out there playing because he's playing so well. Looks like he's trying to get back out there, Jack Darling, really testing that ankle out. Although you wouldn't expect them to take any risks as far as coming back tonight is concerned, but just great to see him even jogging like that, albeit with a, a little bit proppy. Bye next week for the Eagles as well. Part of the reason why they didn't take any risks with Luke Shuey in tonight's match. Duggan. Back for Shepard. Now wide for Barris. Both teams really just filling each other out to start this second quarter. Well, both teams are defending well, particularly when the, the opposition are in their defensive half. They haven't been... Or both teams aren't allowing quick movement out, fast play. Been really structured with their defence, meaning they have to kick the ball around and try to move it around where the defence are. Great mark there by Archie. Takes a good mark to get things moving. That time Archie up towards Kennedy. He wants the run of Cripps. He was creeping up to the 50. Now Waterman is out the back and he'll mark it right next to the square. And it doesn't matter what sort of defensive structure you got. The old-fashioned contested mark breaks it open, yep. and it was Archie, an outstanding mark, and then able to get back, move the ball quickly, and, and players like Josh Kennedy and co, they react so well when a teammate wins the footing. They're often gone before their opponents realise it. Jack Waterman, 11 goals for the season. Make that 12 from point-blank range. And the West Coast get the first of the second term. I was watching Bailey Rice and Jack Waterman. It was a great contest to Mark Archie. They broke it all open. They were able to move the ball quickly. But Rice had taken the front position as this ball came in. He'd actually taken the lead-up space, but just left the gap too far to get back. It's all well and good to cover the front space or, or the dangerous space, but you have to be able to close behind to get that fist in that occasion. Too much ground to carry. Really disappointing when we just watched the replay, that contested mark from Archie. He's outmarked Tom Hickey, yep. which means Hickey has seriously misjudged the ball because he can take it a lot higher than that. Back in the middle. Hickey judged it nicely that time to knock it down to Clark. We'll share it with Sinclair. Quick one-two with Ross. As they look to move forward, nice sidestep to get around Sheed. And then a driving kick long into the pocket, looking for memory. Good right body up. work against McGovern to take the mark. And the other important part of that was the kick was to his advantage. He'd led back to the pocket. He needed the ball over the top, and that allowed him to apply his trade, use a little bit of body, keep McGovern under the footy, and take the mark. Oh, it was great work. Not only the kick from Sinclair, but the ability to get out of trouble. Yep. He's a really handy young player. Tim Membry getting some words of encouragement from Paddy McCartan after he took that mark. And he wanted to capitalise right from this position right through his career. Tim Membry with six straight. Now make that seven straight. An important goal for the Saints to respond. Oh, it's a good centre square clearance from the Saints. West Coast is so good at that, but it came out of a centre square bounce. And here it is. Good use of hands. Sinclair bit of dodge and weave showing his skills the inside step and that's the lead that and it's the kick to advantage of Jason you spoke about it allows memory to go to work use his great body strength get McGovern under the ball and that's two straight tonight from memory he knew it straight off the boot to memory so two goals for him he's feeling up for it tonight in the middle, the Saints will get the clearance again as Ross hooks a kick out to half forward. Bouncing ball, Hutchings will get there first. And Shepard will show some dash off half back. Long up towards Waterman. Austin in from the side. 
Didn't really knock it over the line. Cripps eventually sees it there. Showing some promise, Logan Austin. He's yep. backed himself a few times. Doing a decent job. Elliot Yo, he's been picked up by Hunter Clark, so great opportunity for a young guy in his first year to take on one of the informed midfielders of the competition. So great confidence from Richo to give him the job. Yeah, with the five disposals, you can see him wrestling there with Clark. This ball's knocked away. Phillips to steal. Up to the wing. It's over the head of McCartan. Barris. Now for her. Eagle skipper. Launch one inside 50. And Lysis takes a big mark. And cut across in front of the leading forward. And he clunked it in the hands. He doesn't want to have a shot. He'll just set it up instead to the top of the square. Kennedy to wrestle about three. Rice taking a ground strongly. McKenzie's dragged it back in underneath. And it's going to be a ball up. I guess that's the threat, isn't it, when you've got Lysette taking yeah. a contested mark and Kennedy it was one out. Uh, Sankey did pretty well to nullify the situation, but that's the real threat they pose. Lysette hit out that time. Clark, good hands. Out to Sinclair, who just kicks for space. Out at halfback. Bouncing ball for Nunes. Couldn't find it first time, but spun out of the cold tackle. Good smother by Jeremy McGovern. Sees it over the line. Such an important player, McGovern, and well smothered. But Memory's probably had the better of him to date. Had the seven disposals, kicked the two goals. Be interesting matchup as that one goes throughout the night. Hutchings back for Hearn. Was looking for the barrel and got a good piece of it up towards Kennedy. Off hands, Lacroix was looking to swoop. Rioli sweating off this one. He'll rove and snap a goal, and he's certainly enjoying it, Willie Rioli. Well, in a very short space of time, he's, he's developing cult status here at the West Coast Eagles. He's outstanding, Willie Rowley. He knows how to kick a goal. He's clever. He moves well. He can mark the ball. He's got plenty of tricks. And Jimmy Webster found himself uh, in a really tough position once that ball came forward. It needed to be a clean yeah. takeaway or he needed to kick the ball off the ground. But as soon as he was collared and the ball spilled free, Rioli was in the van. Shane Savage was standing right next to him. You see him in the screen there, but Rioli just able to get goal side quickly, go to the ball. Savage, Savage went round the back, and it's a simple snap. Right to see a Rioli kicking a goal in Indigenous round. As Stephen got it to Ross. Now Loney spears it in low. McGovern was able to stretch and get a hand to it. He recovered very well to get it to Shepard. He's Cole. Back for Barris. He's touched off the boot, so Hearn won't be paid the mark. And we'll get a ball up just inside 50 for the Saints. So they'll try and sit up and make sure they get a little bit of territory time here. Just keep the ball in the forward half of the ground. If it comes out, repeat 50s. Hutchings taken in the standing tackle by Stephen. And ahead of the ball, there's actually quite a bit of space. The St Kilda forwards have really moved up. You've got Membry and McCartan essentially playing two on two in the goal square. Tackling pressure again by the Saints. Ball ricocheting around. Duggan is just going to clear it back up towards the wing. And it favoured Waterman, who was able to take the mark. Now West Coast looking to counter-attack quickly again. He just chips it over the top for Yo. Looked up. He wanted to go... Kick. Wider to oh, the boundary, oh. but it's great vision because Kennedy, leading straight up the middle, takes it just inside the 50. Well, you talk about leading up the middle. Yeah. The kick actually drew the lead. It was the space opened up beautifully. Kennedy had done a, a power of work to find himself in that scenario, but the kick from Elliot Yeo was an absolute beauty. 15 gone, Josh. He's controlled it nicely off the left, right onto the chest of the Eagles spearhead. Josh Kennedy. A mixed bag from this position. That one's got the legs. It's a goal. Well, there he goes over to Elliot Yo and says thanks very much for that one. As any good key forward should do, go and thank the person that gave him the ball because this was a ripping kick in from Elliot Yo. You see Kennedy, he's just tracking the ball there. He's working hard back to goal. No goal comes easy in the AFL, but you can see the space. He's got two on two on one there, but there it is. The step inside, Seb Ross sold the dummy, dummy and what a great kick. Just a beautiful kick. 
Unfortunately, Jaron Geary, too, he was quick to look around and go, how did I end up being stuck on uh, Josh Kennedy's? We see ice applied, no more risk being taken with Jack Darling. They'll take the weight of it, precautionary crutches. Stephen, Savage, and now Loney. Mark just forward of the logo on the wing. There's the Saints trying to build something forward. That one set up Billings because it's easy for Cole to come over the top and knock it away to the line as Jack Darling takes his place on the bench. This is where the Saints just got to lock it in there forward half. Now West Coast has a couple of easy exits now and opportunities inside 50, so their opportunity set up. Territory battle, as we've mentioned. Jamie Cripps there just checking on Jack Darling's welfare. He looked in OK spirits. And there's, there's a big talk inside 50 metre. Oh. He hands to it. He almost was able to claim the mark. Barris now got a few problems. He's fumbling on the last line of defence. Cole got it to McGovern. Oh, sells the dummy nicely and stepping out of trouble. Got it to Sheed. Kicks around the body, a high one. Up towards Lysett, it will get a free kick. And advantage will be taken. West Coast go up to the one-on-one. -on -one. Now, he was caught out of position, and Marshall able to take the mark. West Coast have seen it out to a 29-point lead at the moment as Gresham out to half forward. Could spoil that time, Barris. Duggan, Cole, back for Duggan again. Stabs it short to Redden. Duggan really wasn't expecting it back. Almost a turnover, but the Eagles have the numbers. In oh, fact, the tackle lingered. That's a lucky free kick. An advantage taken. All the players stopped except Gaff, who sends it out towards Nelson. Didn't have anything on short, so I'll go back. It's back with Gaff. He's had a sensational record against St Kilda of late. 36, 36, 36, and 30. Just the eight to date. In his Pat? last four against the Saints, a little bit quieter so far. Yeah, so just not having a huge one at this stage, but we know he can find the pill. Sheed, Kennedy arriving late, and he snatched it away. Phillips was waiting to accept. Kennedy helped himself. He'll send it across now to Lysett. He's got three to beat. McCartan getting back. Oh, well that's done. a strong mark. Yeah, great to see him getting back and putting himself in a good position, taking a contested mark. It's one of the areas they're getting flogged out at the moment. It's nine contested marks to three in favour of West Coast. And they're not all up forward. Sometimes it's in a chain of play that actually creates the further opportunity in the next, uh, in the next possession. Savage short to Clark, who dropped it. He's able to get it across to White. A couple of mistakes there by the Saints. And that's been the issue for the Saints, hasn't it, Jase? They kick four straight from their turnovers in the first quarter, yeah. West Coast. And other than that, you know, they've been really in this game. The contested mark, as you talked about, has been an issue, but it was always going to be the threat. But just need a little bit more polish with the ball use. West Coast kicking at 79%. That is high. That is elite. St Kilda kicking at 68% efficiency. Normally the best in the league, West Coast, going at 67%, but almost 79. That's very efficient by West Coast so far in the match. And that's a good kick to open it up in the middle as well. Archie has presented up. This is part of their game, which is really improved. They just keep the ball rolling. You saw that go across to the other side of the ground, then back again. Enormous foot skills, as we've mentioned. The high one was towards Natanui. I think he had front position, though, to bring it to ground. They've been quite cautious tonight because St Kilda have defended quite well. They have been cautious, which obviously means it's easier to possess the ball and kick it around that 75, 80%. But what they do is when they get forward to centre, they go quickly. They get it in there to their forward line as quickly as they can. Knock down to Lacroix. He's looking to swoop on it. Gave the handball up to Clark. Finds its way through to Billings. Phillips quickly back up the ground, but only as far as Hearn. Couldn't mark against Membry. Jetta. Now Duggan. Could have set something up. He was back in behind Kennedy. Trying to go back and find it. Could spoil Austin. Lacroix desperate for it. He tried to get the kick away. Well, he was laying on the ground. Savage. Rioli. Hunting after the football. Then looking for a free kick. Which he'll get. That's Rice looking in some discomfort again. Yeah, he was in ankle. trouble early today. Holding that right ankle. That doesn't look good. Yeah, that could be... Uh... Could be a stretcher scenario. He doesn't look like he's... Let's hope he can get up and there's nothing too major, but uh, he looks in a bit of strife. I got tangled up with Lacrara. Yeah. He was trying to kick it while he was laying down and then a bit of loose checking from the Saints allows Lysett to take the mark. Yeah, this doesn't look great. He's copped a kick to the leg. So just watch Lacrara here. 
He tries to kick it off the ground. Oh, that's not what you want to see. That's uh, how many times have we seen that as well lead to a serious injury for players? Hasn't been good for lower leg injuries in this match no. so far. Oh, he, look, that's good. I mean, he is up and he's moving and he's putting a little bit of weight on that ankle, that right foot. Let's hope it's not a... We talked about Jack Darling hoping yeah. it's not a break. Let, let's absolutely hope the same for Rice on this occasion. He looks disconsolate, but hopefully nothing too major. So Bailey Rice helped from the ground. Scott Lice has had plenty of time to think about this set shot. As Rice was right in the road initially. Lice it from the paint of 50. Nice off the boot, but just held its line. And just carried over the line for a behind. Oh, there's, he's putting some weight through that. So that is good news that he hasn't broken something. Yeah. But let's uh, let's not hold our breath. Let's, <laughs> let's get the report from Dicko. And they're not going to assess him down here. They're taking him straight down to the rooms. So I'll give you an update at half time on how Bailey Rice's ankles pulled up. Disappointing for Bailey Rice playing just his third game. The Saints trying to find a way out of defence. Stephen ran almost into a lot of trouble. I don't know, he's still hunting after him. Short to White. Webster. Nervous moment with the handball. Cripps, good pressure. Stephen got the kick away. Oh, McKenzie well under a lot of pressure. Well well he done. wasn't paid the mark, but he was able to keep it moving St Kilda's way. West Coast eventually pinching it back. Went through the legs of Jetta. Duggan. Cole after it. McKenzie back in there again. Now Sinclair emerging with it. Miss Savage, but time to find it. Now sent it long inside 50. Membry had a spoil. He knew Gresham was waiting down. He tried to knock it in that direction. It was then almost taken high. St Kilda building. They've got some numbers. Sinclair got the shepherd from Hickey. Gets closer to goal. Goes around the corner and crafts it back beautifully. Oh, well played, St Kilda. Fantastic ball movement. Mm. A few ill handballs throughout the middle, but it made it work in the end. They transferred the ball to the other side, back in through the middle, then the long kick, and this is the contest for memory that really... A big punch from... And what about this for just beelining the ball from Gresham? Caught a little one high. Sinclair can certainly play, showing all his skills tonight, dodging, weaving, and that's a good finish. Hanging in there, the Saints. Maybe that'll provide a bit of a spark. Margin back to 24 points. Great goal there to Sinclair. Out of the middle. Sheed wins it after Clark slipped over. Inside 50 go West Coast. Hacked out of there by White. It's a good effort as well. Got plenty of distance on it. And now Nunes around the wing. Not much to go to inside 50, so he belts it as long as he can, and intercepting it is Shannon Hearn. Well, that's the problem. They're, just, they're undersized at both ends, and if Membry can't get there to make the contest, Loney just not good enough to make any sort of contest against Hearn. Lewis Jetta into space, but the kick goes wide, and out of bounds on the field. Well, and often with those small forwards, Pav, what they do is they don't even bother trying to compete. Yeah. They just sit back and say, well, it's my job to crumb. But sometimes they've got to go yep. and actually make that contest for their team. Well, it's not only making the contest, but it's the ball carrier making it easier for the teammates up the ground and actually making the right decision on that occasion. Not the best kick coming in, not necessarily the right decision, but you're right, just creating a contest, whether you're tall or small, will certainly help. Thanks, Liam. West Coast have held some Kilda up after the switch. Play on. Play on. It's with Ross, who's called to go. Send it up towards Membry, but McGovern floats in front. It's just a strange kick from Seb Ross. He had the little chip on, he ignored it, and then he waits till he's put under pressure. Stranger kick by McGovern, yeah. who went into the corridor and turned it over to Steele. Sinclair sends it forward. Up by just about got in the road. Mav Weller can make them pay, but he misses badly out to the right. So you've got a two-on-one. He could have straightened, kicked a drop punt. He could have run and drawn and hand-passed over the top. Sets himself around the corner and strikes the ball in the belly and... Butch is a, what should have been a certain goal. Thankfully, it wasn't a dribble. As, but it's just as bad, perhaps. I mean, at this level, you don't get opportunities like that too often. 
and you can't have it, particularly when you're a bottom team, you're playing the top team, you can't afford to waste opportunities that are just certain goals gone begging. And one that St Kilda desperately need as well. Having a bit of a surge at the moment. Might still have a chance here. Billings kick it was off the hands that time of Duggan. Loney looking dangerous. Got it back to Gresham, who's been a sharp shooter. Just not enough on the kick as Barris thumps it over the line. Well, it has been better from the Saints this last few minutes. And what a goal does here is it fuels your belief. It fuels your belief to work hard, to get it in your forward half, to get it to players to finish the hard work. So... Just need some reward for an effort because it's been outstanding the last few minutes. Yeah, the repeat entries, big tick. We're in red time now, so the next four minutes is massive. They just need to hit the scoreboard. They do that, go in half time with a little bit of belief. 17 points at quarter time. Only 22 at the moment. West Coast having the better of the early stages of this quarter. They're fought there by Marshall, Hickey, Ross, Webster. Back for Ross, who had to stretch to get there. But he had some support that went through the hands of Austin. Now they're being forced back, but Stephen will straighten them up. And he gets it back to Ross. Had some support from Hickey. Now Sinclair. They're doing it the hard way, and eventually the turnover comes. Or does it? The tackle lingered, and a free kick going the way of St Kilda. Yeah, fair enough as well. The Elliot Yo just lingered that tackle. Sinclair's having a good game. And he gets it out to Webster. A high ball inside 50 again. Again, Taylor made for Jeremy McGovern. Well, Paddy McCartan lamenting to the umpire that he was held off the ball, but he's just got to make a better effort to get there and compete. That is the high ball in that has to result in some sort of contest. Sixth mark already for Jeremy McGovern. Ball off hands. Gaff waiting to accept. Now West Coast with some numbers through the middle. Redden over the top for Hutchings. He's got runners to the left. Well, Lacroix on inside 50, and it's a good kick to him. And Lacroix will go back and have the set shot. Alan Richardson not happy. Down on the boundary line. Well, they're just... They're opposite ends of the spectrum when you look at the quality of the inside 50. One's a high bomb that doesn't get a contest. Intercept mark, flip it over. And then you've got players running into space. Players streaming downfield under no pressure to deliver, just hitting their targets at ease. And mark Lacroix having a good season. The veteran. Usually reliable. Good from this spot through his career. For his 20th goal of the season. No problem with that. And that really hurts the Saints as we close in on half time. Well, great work, great right from Lacroix. But let's just look at the distance between his opponent and he to begin with. Just a little bit too much. We saw this earlier in the quarter. Just too much room for Austin to make up. It's great work, great right? and ball movement from West Coast. You see Slick, Scott Lysette, one of the handball, the big ruckman. But have a look at the work right there from Lacroix. Austin just can't quite make it up. He, he's almost there. It only ends up being about a, a metre or so, but too far. Really good work rate right, from Mark Lacroix. Just starting their position, some of their defenders, just a little bit too far forward. So St Kilda threatening a number of times up the other end. West Coast sweep it up the ground and get the goal as Lysett invents the karate kick out of the middle to get the ball forward, but it's intercepted by Savage. Now Membry on the lead, just over his head. He's trying to recover. And he had to hurdle over the top of McGovern, and then awkwardly tackles Ross. Allowed to go. Membry involved again. Gaff getting busier. Redden. Duggan. They showed the footy. He was able to get it away. And a good kick to Archie. He's had strong hands tonight. Really strong hands, Archie. Want to see you over from Port Adelaide just finding his feet in this West Coast team. But really strong hands. Yeah, injury to start the year. Just his fourth game of the season. Brendan Archie's This ball spills out the back. Kennedy trying to recover from the pocket. He'll just wobble it towards the top of the square. Awkward run for Webster. He dropped the mark. Now they're under pressure. Sinclair collared as well. And oh, holding the ball, the decision. Wow. And Jamie Cripps will get the shot on goal. It looked at first glance, I thought, to be a legal handball. We'll have a look again. Not sure there's a lot of prior opportunity there. I'd say well, very little. <laughs> Ball spilling out in the tackle. It was a good tackle, though. Fantastic. He yeah. works hard defensively, Cripps. Oh, Jamie Cripps will be rewarded for that hard work. After the free kick, he converts. And West Coast have opened up a 34-point lead. That's the type of pressure 
West Coast or any forward line would love to see. There's the first part from Rioli. Here's the second one. He's picked that up and been tackled straight away and has tried to handle that. I would say that's pretty unlucky and a bit quick from the umpire on that occasion. But, geez, an underrated player. Cripps probably didn't have the year he would have liked last year, but he's back in some form and two goals tonight. Really important for this West Coast team. So inside the last minute of this first half. Eagles up by 34. Looking to make it 10 in a row. If they can win tonight, Hickey. It's a free kick in the middle, lice it. Now Jetta pushing up off half back. Kick just off the side of the boot. Kennedy sandwiched again. Had to knock it away. Archie was clean. Couldn't find Gaff. Here's Sinclair. He chips it up. Looking for Weller, who judged that very well. Thank you. Thank you. Can the Saints get a late one? Call to go. Needed some support. Webster will go back in short to Savage. Still time for the Saints if they get it moving forward. And Savage is going to blast it. Long inside, 50, looking for McCartan, who knocked it down. Nunes just put it on the boot. The bounce will be important. The bounce is very good. And the Saints do get that late one right on the siren of halftime. That'll give them a lift as they head to the Sheds. 28-point lead it is at halftime. Bit of luck going the Saints' way right there at the major break. They fought hard. St Kilda in that second quarter, so a bit of reward for their effort. Yeah, absolutely. Great contest from McCartan. They had the opportunity to go in a little bit quicker, St Kilda, on that occasion to an open forward line, but they built the ball. Great contest from McCartan and very good finish from Nunes. It's what they needed heading into half time. Well, it's the same contest we spoke about a couple of minutes earlier yep. that he didn't get there and make. That time he made sure he got there. He killed the ball. He had Crummers front and square. Well done. West Coast in control of things at the major break. Let's get downstairs to Ben Dixon with Andrew Gaff. Thanks very much, Paps. Andrew, uh, interesting half. You guys have converted unbelievably, but the pressure's been right on from the Saints. Yeah, definitely. They've been good. We knew they'd come out firing us the last couple of weeks, and they're pretty quick when they get the ball, so we struggled to stop that a bit, but to kick 10, 10 lines good and hopefully pick it up in the second half. We're in the middle of the ground there, plus six in clearances. How have you seen that as a player through there? Yeah, it does feel like we're doing too much. Uh, well in the centre bounce, feel they're clearing every one of those. So we're going to readjust and uh, fix it up for the second half. What about the kicking game? They've restricted your, your speed a little bit, but there's always a way around that with West Coast style. Yeah, definitely. We, so, uh, we sort of have numerous ways to play, and uh, it, it was different last week against Hawthorne and a little bit different today. So we've got to fix a few things. Thanks for your time. Thanks, mate. Right Andrew Gaff there with Ben Dixon. West Coast will be feeling pretty comfortable at halftime. We'll be back with all the analysis of the first two quarters with Matthew Pavlich and Jason Dunstall. It's the Eagles by 28 points.